They lie, cheat, violate the rules, then cover up, and they get away with it. We're no longer a country where the law is equally applied. This nation, conceived on the principle of equal rights and equal justice, is no longer true to its Declaration of Independence. Less than 48 hours ago, we found out just how far Democrats in the highest law enforcement agencies, allegedly nonpartisan offices, would go to cover up for the Obama administration. Now, you remember that meeting on the tarmac between Attorney General Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton, outed only because a local reporter happened to be there. The FBI wouldn't allow photos, pictures, or cell phones. There were no reports made that the highest ranking law enforcement official in this country was approached by the spouse of a woman being actively investigated in the most important criminal investigation in the history of presidential politics. That meeting on the tarmac was followed by an FBI interrogation of Hillary Clinton and, as we all know, her subsequent exoneration. The FBI and the Department of Justice both colluding to allow Hillary a free pass. But we didn't know how deep and dirty the collusion really was until 48 hours ago. In response to a Freedom of Information application to both the FBI and the DOJ by Jay Sekulow and the American Center for Law and Justice requesting all documents regarding that meeting, the FBI responded with a terse, no records responsive to your request were located. Folks, that was a calculated, knowing, and intentional lie. And as for the Department of Justice, they never even bothered to respond. But a subsequent federal lawsuit decided not during the Obama administration revealed 413 pages of documents between the FBI and the DOJ on that tarmac meeting. And in those documents, the FBI and the Department of Justice colluded on how they would handle the outing of this highly irregular, unethical, and some would say illegal meeting and what their talking points should be. Some talking points drafted even before Loretta Lynch was questioned. And they agreed to coordinate by letting each other know what questions were asked by the press. So what did we learn? Here's an example of the document that the DOJ sent. Redacted emails between the FBI and Justice. They blacked out the relevant talking points so that you cannot see what collusion actually occurred between Justice and the FBI to protect Hillary, Bill, Loretta, and the whole lot of them. But don't worry. A lawsuit will be filed first thing Monday morning to unredact what they've covered up. This is not information that can be legally withheld from us. It doesn't involve national security. And you can be damn sure it doesn't involve what Loretta and Bill said they talked about, their grandchildren or their golf games. And it gets worse, folks. We see emails from the Washington Post, the FBI, and the New York Times where they make clear they really don't want to cover this. And the Department of Justice comments to the FBI that it looks like only Fox News is covering this. Folks, this was a cover-up of an illegal meeting, collusion, between Bill Clinton and the Attorney General, after which the FBI interrogated Hillary and then exonerated her, after which Hillary then brazenly proclaimed that if she won, she would hire Loretta Lynch as her Attorney General. So while this country is now virtually paralyzed with fake news stories of collusion, I ask you, what evidence... Give me one piece of evidence, one iota of something, that Donald Trump's campaign colluded with the Kremlin. And all the leaking that the FBI does and intelligence agencies continue to do, you haven't heard one piece of evidence for eight months, 24-7 collusion between Donald Trump and the Russians. Now, I have an idea. 
It's time to take the country back, back to the original intent of our founders. No one is above the law and no one is below it. Mueller has impaneled a grand jury in a district that despises our president. Mueller is a friend of Comey, who has brought on Hillary and Obama lovers to take down the president. He is completely convicted, conflicted. Loretta Lynch's case needs to be heard by a grand jury to review the collusion on that tarmac and the promise of a payoff to Lynch. Hillary Clinton's case needs to be brought to a grand jury immediately. There is still time to prosecute her for putting our classified information on her private server that she then shared with her girlfriends, one of whom shared a computer with her dirtbag husband. All of the immunity agreements can be nullified. Most of the terms have already been violated. And Hillary must be prosecuted for perjury. She and her State Department intentionally lied, saying there were no Benghazi emails and no classified emails, as she deleted 33,000 emails on yoga and her wedding dress. Right. And she needs to be prosecuted for destroying and concealing subpoenaed property and the emails. The Clinton Foundation and all its spin-offs need to be brought before a grand jury. Eric Holder, who purged himself before Congress under oath, needs to be prosecuted too. And I don't want to hear any more of this kumbaya. I don't want to hear any more, we have to look to the future. I don't want to hear Hillary's a good woman. She's not. These people live by the Saul Alinsky playbook. And while we play by the rules, they lie, steal, cheat, and continue to get away with it. Because... Let's jump back in now with all the news that's being made today on North Korea. Kim Jong-un vowing to strike the United States after the U.N. Security Council slapped strict new sanctions on North Korea's exports. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, as we've been reporting this hour, offering to talk to the regime, but only if it halts its missile testing. Joining me now is Ohio Congressman Mike Turner, a member of the House Armed Services and House Intel Committees. Good to see you, sir. I've been talking about you this hour, that you were coming up. And Good I want to ask you now about the importance of China's voice getting in on this and not miss the fact that Russia also voted in favor of these sanctions at the U.N. How significant is that? Well, Harris, you are absolutely right. These sanctions are important, obviously, because they will put pressure on the North Korean regime. But more importantly, as you were stating, China and Russia came to the table and actually voted in favor of these sanctions. Uh, this is an effort, obviously, by the United States and a win for Ambassador Haley uh, to garner the support of the international community, get them focused, but also get them committed to that there needs to be a resolution of this issue, that this cannot go on. North Korea needs to stop its missile tests, and it certainly needs to come to the table on negotiations to end its nuclear weapons program. You know, you talked about a win for uh, our ambassador, Nikki Haley, and thereby being a win for the Trump ad administration. And the president has all along made China, uh, he's tweeted about it, he's talked about it, he's made that the pivotal role, if you will, in all of this. How important is it that he's been able to get to a place where this could happen? Watch and listen with me. The Chinese foreign minister uh, got on record with this. Do not, and, and he's saying this to North Korea. Do not violate the UN's decision or provoke international society's goodwill by conducting missile launching or nuclear tests. Of course, we would like to urge other parties like the U.S. and South Korea to stop increasing tensions. I think I understand that second part, Congressman uh, Turner, as a little bit of politics. But talk to me about that first part, because that's important. Right. <clears throat> It is absolutely important. You know, the United States has a, a, a policies of non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction and nuclear weapons. It doesn't matter if it's our allies or adversaries. China has been unclear uh, in, its, uh, um, in its position on uh, non-proliferation and has clearly been supporting the North Korean regime as they've pursued nuclear weapons and their missile technologies, which threaten South Korea, Japan, and the United States. While North Korea has openly threatened to use these weapons, as mm -hmm. you just reported even in this uh, uh, segment, uh, threatening the United States. So China stepping in is, is now firmly taking a stance uh, that North Korea's um, programs, its weapons, and its threats need to be halted. So has President Trump and his administration maybe been able to get someplace with China that is fresh and new for this country, particularly where we are right now? 
Well, Harris, you're absolutely correct, as you said earlier, to get to North Korea, you've got to go through China. And the president correctly identified that China was the key to this. You know, we have to de-escalate this. North Korea has to be disarmed. We're not going to be able to accomplish it without China. <clears throat> the president has correctly uh, pointed the finger at China and said, this is something you need to step to the table to do. They're obviously feeling that pressure as they're beginning to go on record mm. uh, to oppose North Korea's uh, weapons program, its missile program. Uh, this is a shift. And, you know, these, these weapons and certainly these missiles that they're shooting off now, they didn't just develop since January. This has been around a long time. It's good to see administration that's stepping to the plate and saying this is a national security threat to the United States and we're going to take action to stop it. Yeah, you're hearing people like Senator Lindsey Graham say that we don't have really great options in all this. Are we going to go to war with North Korea? Well, I, I would, you know, hopefully not. But I think we, we do have some options that, uh, that don't always uh, get uh, discussed on the table, one of which is certainly our missile defense program. We've put additional FAD in um, South Korea. We have the Aegis uh, ships with have, which have missile defense capabilities. We have ground-based missile defense uh, that we're strengthening. Uh, the Congress just approved about another $2.5 billion on missile defense to help uh, us there. Uh, we certainly are strengthening our allies. And then I think by pushing, putting this additional pressure on China, we can get North Korea to the table. There is no reason for a regime like this that is as erratic as it is with the leader that it has to have nuclear weapons and missiles capable of, uh, of hitting our allies in the United States. Do you advocate the president meeting or, or someone from his administration meeting directly with talks with North Korea? Well, I think if, if, if China is involved and North Korea is coming to the table to actually negotiate uh, elimination uh, or secession of their um, missile program and certainly ending their nuclear weapons program, mm -hmm. uh, those are talks that are worth attending. Um, they will de-escalate uh, the situation. They will make our country safer. Uh, and it's, it certainly is the direction that this has to go. Representative Mike Turner from the great state of Ohio, good to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Harris.